for Newcastle fans TV. I hope he's all good. Uh, the transfer window for European clubs as well as lower league English clubs, so Sunderland, have, uh, the transfer windows are closed today. Newcastle announced two departures out on loan. The first of them being Rolando Arons, who went out on loan to Wigan Wanderers. Uh, this was a very much a surprise. I thought he would have been at least in uh, at least the Championship club would have snapped him up. But it's a great coup for Wigan Wanderers. Wigan fans, if you're watching, what type of player he's getting? He's getting a good winger, very direct, good at good at a cross. On his days, unplayable even at ha even at the highest level. Us Newcastle fans have seen that uh, when he first burst onto the scene against. Um, Crystal Palace in the free-free draw a couple of years ago, and then again against Manchester City in what was at the time the Capital One Cup where he made uh, Martin Demichelis look like a small child as he ran past him and slotted the ball past Willy Caballero to put 1-0 in front at the Etihad. Uh, good memories, that one. Uh, maybe slightly surprising with the destination for one of them, perhaps. Uh, the surprising one being Rolando Ahrens. He has been shipped out on loan until January. He's gone to Wickham Wanderers, who are doing quite well. Have made a decent start in League One. Um, they did have a 0-0 draw last time out against AFC Wimbledon. So he'll go in there and uh, obviously he'll be a massive coup, you, you, you'd have to say, for uh, you know a team down there. I think... Um, Given his options, I think he's tried, obviously, the foreign loan before. Did that work? Probably not. Uh, when he went to uh, Liberec uh, to play over there. So he's probably looked, you know, League One's as high as he can go currently um, because of, obviously, all the, the transfer window and stuff. So he's gone there. It's a great platform for, you know, it, you know a great platform for him in a, you know in a team that's doing quite well in League One. So that's a really, really positive. He'll come back in January uh, and then obviously Steve Bruce will most likely see whether he can accommodate him in his squad moving forward because you don't know what the situation is going to be. You know, is Carroll still fit then? Uh, you know, are players moved on? You know, are unhappy players moved on, etc. Stuff like that. So you never know if a, a position could become available in the squad come January. In recent years, he's had a couple of injuries, a couple of personal problems off the field, which has deterred his progress. But you're getting a really good player there, especially for the level in League One, uh, where you'll be looking on him as a main threat, someone to get forward, cause loads of problems. And I wish him the best of luck because he's, he needs first-team football. He featured a lot in pre-season under Steve Bruce's sides, played at left wing-back and he played uh, just behind the forward. So he was looked at very, very, very much so by Steve Bruce and his team. But he's, I think, they just preferred Christian Atsu over him, who ironically is the man in form at the moment. Uh, with what Johnny thinks was a man of the match performance against Watford, and his assist that led to the win against Tottenham. So it, ironically, it, it's te it's taken a Christian Atsu who has been in and around the Newcastle team for a couple of years to keep Aaron's out. But good luck, Rolando. And hopefully back in, next, in January when you come back, there might be a place for you in the 25. On to the next one, the forgotten man, Art of Lazar, Serie B team on loan for the rest of the season. And this one, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about this one. It's a good move for both player and clubs involved because he's not going to get any game time here. He's just... Even under even under Bruce, who had him on loan at Sheffield Wednesday last season, has looked at him and thought, you know what, maybe not this time. But I, I, it's just one of them with Lazar. I think a lot of fans have said he was more focused on his Instagram and, and things like that than in regards to his football. In terms of his football ability, I, actually, I still haven't seen much of him. I've only seen him in the win against Cheltenham in the League Cup a couple of years ago. That's the last time I've seen this lad play. And it's... I, I I guess it's a shame because he didn't get really get a first team opportunity, but at the same time, it's just if he kind of get into the team when we had major injuries at left back last season, and Matt Ritchie slotting in as a left wing back instead of opting to go with this lad, it's like you question whether he was ever good enough. He's moved to uh, a team in Italy, uh, and I'm gonna attempt it to say con consenza. Now, they're a team who've been in Serie B for two seasons. They finished last season in 10th position on their debut season in uh, Serie B. Uh, obviously, the standard of football, from what I've seen, the facilities, the, the, the team and stuff, it isn't the best. But it's first team football and it's got to give him an opportunity to get back into football because he, he just hasn't done enough. You know, I, I said before, he looks like a bit like a, a you know, a catalogue model. 
Um, I think he needs to put his football first. This is going to give him a platform to hopefully be able to do that. Um, and then from there, you would expect him to try and force a move on, uh, a permanent move, hopefully somewhere, because it's just loan after loan after loan. You know, obviously, he was at Sheffield Wednesday previously. Um, and he's been here, there and everywhere, and he just hasn't, no matter what the type of manager, you know, which country, what climate, he just doesn't seem to... Uh, I don't know, is it hard? Is it hunger? Is it desire? Is Or is it just purely, he's not good enough? I don't know. Uh, but whereas uh, Aaron's signed a, what, a couple of month contract, half a season contract, uh, Lazar has signed for the full season, so we will not see him back to Tyneside until next summer, when he will be in the final year of his contract. Um, unbelievable, this lad's uh, stole a living, to be honest, for all this time. Uh, both Aaron's and Lazar are out of contract in 2021. Uh, and where I still think Aaron's maybe he's got a, a sniff, a, a slight chance of making a future at Newcastle United, I think Lazar has got absolutely none. Uh, you know, given as well the fact that Bruce had them at Sheffield Wednesday, uh, and neither of them have still managed to make it, despite having that advantage of knowing the manager before he came in, I think speaks volumes to, you know, to me that they're just not good enough. Rafa made some great signings as Newcastle manager, but uh, I don't think Alcazar was ever high up in that list. Even Matt Sells played for Newcastle. This lad just didn't. And he, for me, he's definitely Rafa's worst ever signing. And uh, I think it's a case of good riddance to him, to be honest. I'm not usually that harsh on players, but it's a good move for him. It's a good move for us. Move him on. If he does well in Serie B, hopefully he can get a permanent move there so he can move on from what has been a horrid... Uh, moment in his career by coming to Newcastle. Jack Colback, um, he didn't get a loan move away. We're expecting him to uh, go to a championship club after he played decent for um, Notts Forest, you read, last season. Um, with them actually being interested, but I think the one thing that's holding it back is his wage demands. This the, he's on quite a hefty wage demand at Newcastle. And we needed to, we needed that to get him from Sunderland all those years ago to bring him to Newcastle because he was one of their key players. But it's it's biting biting him in the arse now because he kind of find a move and he kind of get in in the Newcastle team. He had an okay preseason. I mean, I got a lot of shit for that, but I stand by it. I'd say he has it. He had an okay preseason, and a lot of people were starting to think, is he going to make the twenty five? I mean, we we're saying that on great teeth, man, because I know he played well in preseason. But I didn't want him in the twenty five. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, but if Isaac Hayden was to leave, which was highly expected, you'd think Jack Colbert would have been the one to slot in if the replacement wasn't found. Still leaves Savé, still leaves like, so Jack Colbert kicking about. So what they are going to do, I don't know. Uh, you know, they might get the odd game here and there in you know the likes of the the fitness game that they're arranging shortly for Andy Carroll. I suppose they might get a run out there. Um, but why do footballers just want to sit round at training grounds when there's clubs out there? that you can move them on to, um, you know, to, to push start and you, you, your career, it's a short career as it is as a footballer. Why do you want to be, you know, well, we, I think we all know why, but surely you've got to have a, a, a greater desire than just for money. I mean, these are paid so, so much money. Money shouldn't be a problem, so it should be the footballing opportunities um, and the challenge and being in a team and, you know, striving to be, the best that you can be. So, uh, yeah, a bit shocked that Colback hasn't left, a bit shocked that Save hasn't left, but they'll be around Benton, and who knows what they can offer. The next one, Henri Save, who also didn't get a move. He was he was fancy to get a move because of his um, because how well he did for his national side getting to the African Cup of Nations final uh, just a couple of months ago. But he couldn't he couldn't get a move. He's still training with the first team. I've seen in pictures, but he's not gonna. Get, I don't think he's gonna get that move away. I think it's the same for him. Uh, under twenty three, so January. Uh, I think it leaves quite an experience under twenty three's midfield. I suppose the young youngsters could learn something off them. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's something until January. I'm not quite sure. But like Lazar, Henri Saibé just hasn't worked out. He has got a moment, though. Us fans will always remember the Henri Saibé game, which was West Ham away a couple of years back, where he scored the free kick. He uh, had, a, had a couple of bad, really bad passes, which led to West Ham goals. But 
we won't win it up win that game three two so that'll always be known as the Henry Savé game in my opinion in any way but the last one and I think this is a bit of a sad one actually Jamie Sterry who hasn't been able to get him moving he, he's really solid at the lower level so I'm really surprised the crew didn't go back in for him or Coventry like a couple of years back Um, it's a real shame because this lad is is a Geordie lad local lad even chat Travelling with the supporters to go to the under twenty three game against Sunderland's first team, hi first team. I think the time for him to break in was last year, because Yedlin wasn't playing well, Manquio wasn't playing well. We had a bit of a crisis at right back, if I was honest. And if Jamie Sterry was ever going to break into the team, I think it would have been then. But he just didn't make the grade, and it's it's a, it's a real shame, you know, because he's a really canny lad. I've met the lad before. He's really canny. He's always got time to speak to fans and everything like that. Really sound lad. But I think it's with a heavy heart, mate. When your contract runs down at the end of the season, go and find yourself another club, mate, who'll give you first team football and really try to really prove us wrong that you deserved a chance at this team. It's the international break, and what do you want to say from Newcastle fans TV? Do you want to see? We had the quizzes last year. Them, them were really well received. You just want to see them again. There is no what you just want to see. I mean, we've got we've got what two weeks until the season returns, so there's something to fill fill the void, I suppose. But anything you just want to see, let let us know in the comments below, and we'll we'll discuss it and try and make it happen. So yeah. And on another note as well, we're trying to reach uh, two, uh, sorry, 20,000 subscribers. Johnny mentioned it from the start. Now I'm going to start mentioning it now. We're not that many away, so every like, every comment, every share would help massively in attaining that goal. So, uh, yeah, everything would be massively appreciated. I sound like a generic YouTuber now, so I apologise for that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've been Kyle, and you've been watching Newcastle Fans TV. And, yeah, have a good evening. I'll see you later. Yeah,